Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video you join me on a very rare and dry day I don't want to jinx it here in Wales where I am actually working on creating a new wildlife garden believe it or not in that little white speck of a house down there so stay tuned full creational video on that garden to come anyway in today's video we are going to be talking about the hedgerow one of our most iconic landscape features here in the UK when you should plant them why you should plant them and the importance of them so stick around because this is going to be a bit of an informative video which should hopefully open your eyes wherever you are around the world as to the importance of these invaluable habitats for wildlife so what is a hedgerow well a hedgerow is something that was established believe it or not as long ago as the Bronze Age, maybe even earlier into the Neolithic period. So we're talking four to 5,000 years, an incredible amount of time. So it's really something that has been a feature of our landscape for many, many centuries and indeed thousands of years, as I've just said. So what was the importance of these hedgerows? Why were they started? Well, they were actually started because people used to um, clear areas of woodland when we were a much more wooded country. The woodland was cleared and scrub was cleared to make way for agriculture. So strips were then left of trees and shrubs along the edges of these fields to mark a bit of a boundary. And then later on between sort of 1720 and 1840, we had the Enclosures Act here in the UK. So that meant that more pieces of land were parceled up and uh, mostly given to landed gentry, but uh, that's a story for another day. So yes, the hedgerow has become a vital part of our landscape, as I've already said, and it's one that really is an incredible habitat for wildlife as well, which is why you guys are here. And before we go any further, guys, I should say, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It means a huge deal to me and obviously it helps push these videos and the main reason I started this channel three and a half years ago now which was to of course try to encourage more people around the world to create habitats for wildlife so please guys hit that subscribe button and the notification bell then you won't miss a single video that I produce which is every Sunday at 6 p.m. so why are hedgerows good for wildlife well for one, they act as a corridor. They are absolutely brilliant as a means of wildlife safely getting from one place to another. Now, if you take the field behind me, for example, classic example, we've got the entranceway here. Don't worry, I'm on a foot, footpath, I'm not trespassing. Uh, we have the entranceway here, but then from here over to there, you've got probably a couple of hundred meters. Now, if you were a vole or a mouse or a small bird, in fact, you are going to be absolutely taking your own life or your life in your own hands if you are trying to traverse this space out in the open because you will be open to predators such as foxes you'll be open to predators such as sparrowhawks uh, buzzards as well that sort of thing so there's a whole host of predators waiting for you out there and things like snakes as well in england obviously we have three species of snake we have the adder the grass snake and the smooth snake and uh, a good example of a snake that would use this kind of an area would be a grass snake depending on the kind of locality as to where you are across the uk they're not in our furthermost regions in scotland the adders are there of course but they'll be hiding in heather and the sort of uh, thickets if you like on the moorland more often than not so but in particular grass snakes do move around a lot to find water they hunt a lot around water bodies wildlife ponds obviously and they eat frogs toads newts and anything they can find that's small enough so and slow worms as well they're actually one of our legless lizards so they again if trying to cross somewhere like this they're going to be picked off by buzzards red kites kestrels sparrowhawks anything that can get their mouth around them in essence so a hedgerow is a really good linear feature and you can see this one here it's a corridor look at that see that as the m1 or the m6 or the m4 of the wildlife world which is where a lot of animals are going to be working their way through with the security of a dense thick hedge which is going to provide them with lots of cover to be able to move around so things like hedgehogs as well Hedgehogs will obviously use hedgerows for migrating from one area to the next, um, again, through, uh, through their, for their own safety. So the hedgerow is great as a corridor, but it's also great because it obviously provides 
a great potential for nesting birds. Now, the denser the hedge, the thicker it is, the harder it is for birds to get in, things such as sparrowhawks, and of course our corvid species, magpies, crows, jackdaws, which will of course take chicks and eggs from a nest, and some of our bigger birds will do as well. So a dense nesting habitat is a really good example of how hedgerows can benefit birds because it creates that privacy for them and to stop things like cats as well, obviously, we're not far from habitation here and cats will wander out into the countryside countryside, and they will, um, of course, pick off chicks if they can. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, cats are a big, big problem here in the UK. They are believed to kill about 40 million birds, according to the RSPB, every year. So yes, a big problem. Now, why should we be planting them? Why should we be worrying about them? And why should we be considering planting one in our own garden, for example? Well, the UK, try and stick with me for a minute here because the numbers are staggering. The UK has a total of half a million miles of hedgerow running across it. Imagine that in terms of the corridors. It's unbelievable. That, uh, to give you uh, a bit of a comparison is enough mileage to stretch around the world the circumference of the earth 20 times that's how many miles of hedgerow we have here in the uk however since the 1950s so what are we 2023 73 years ago we have lost 118,000 miles of hedgerow which as a quick calculation is at least eight times the circumference of the globe. So we have lost that much hedgerow with the intensification of agriculture in the last 70 years. Now imagine how much that has had a, an adverse effect on local wildlife populations, on the maneuverability and the way in which our wildlife migrates across the countryside and moves to different areas, colonizing new habitats. Things such as birds, as I've said, will more often than not travel down a hedge line. So a lot of your tit species that are more open to predation from sparrowhawks, for example, will often flock together at this time of year and use these hedgerows as a corridor, as we've already spoken about. So why are we worried about them? Well, as you can imagine, this is a staggering amount of hedgerow that we have lost. So the more we can plant in our gardens, I know you're not likely to be able to plant anything like that unless you've got a few acres, but the more we can plant in our gardens, the more cover it will provide for wildlife, the more nesting potential it will provide for wildlife. And also hedgerows are, without a shadow of a doubt, amazing for nectar and berries as well. They of course are providing nectar in the spring months, so you've got all your blackthorn, your hawthorn, uh, your gelder rose, uh, crab apples in, in them sometimes, you know, hazel, all these species are going to be flowering early on in the air providing nectar for a whole host of wildlife and then of course providing seeds and fruits and berries and all sorts for a lot of the wildlife in the autumn months when they're thinking about going into hibernation or they're coming in from Scandinavia things such as our red wings, field fares, uh, more blackbirds obviously and robins as well. Many, many birds will use the berries that are available in a hedgerow to feed themselves and stock themselves up through the winter months as will mammals as well before they go into hibernation so wood mice and things like that so it's really incredible imperative that we leave as many of these as we can. The management of these hedgerows is a topic for another day. So how can you help? Well, we now have a new bare root selection at this time of year available on the online shop. And stick around because in a moment I'm going to come on to when is the best time to plant them in your garden. And this is this refers to native trees and shrubs in general not just hedgerows so stick around guys that's coming up in a moment but i just wanted to say we do now obviously offer the bare root hedging on the wildyourgarden.com online shop where you can buy a selection of 10 and you can mix that up and get a five species pack if you are looking to create a hedgerow in your garden or on your land um, and then if you aren't sure of which species to get then do get in touch inquiries at wildyourgarden.com where we can obviously offer a unique service where I will tailor make an order for you to give you the information you need to plant them in your garden. If you're looking for specific trees, things such as silver birch, rowan, crab apple, and for the best 
15 shrubs I think it was and trees to go in your wildlife garden check out a video that I'll put a link to at the end of this one where I discuss in detail more detail in this on some of the individual species and why they are good for wildlife things such as hollies spindle galdros just go check it out at the end of this video guys so hedgerows get some in your garden native trees and shrubs get some in your garden as i say the wild your garden online shop we now ship throughout the uk why are they available as bare root well now is the, the time of year to be planting them because which was what i was going to come on to next when is the best time to plant them uh, so now from mid-november right the way through until the end of march when they are in their dormancy and that's why we can offer them at a cheaper price with just the root, no soil, no compost, no pot. So it's a lot easier obviously to ship them. So it's cheaper for you guys. And therefore you can buy more of them at this time of year. And it's a great time of year to be planting them because as I've just said, they are in their dormancy. So they're not growing as such and all. Uh, the sap has reduced from the leaves and obviously they've dropped all the leaves and it's reduced right into uh, the center and the roots of the tree. So uh, they are effectively not dead but they are they are sleeping at this time of year so hence we can ship them without any soil on the roots if we were to do this in the summertime they'd obviously dry out and shrivel up and they wouldn't be very good to you guys so yes it is a great year to be planting them you can of course plant them as a hedgerow as individual shrubs as individual trees at this time of year absolutely perfect for them now until the end of march we have them available so just get out there and get some in your garden because these provide the structure. If you've just moved into a new plot, if you've just moved into a new house and you're thinking, well, where do I even start? Obviously, I do offer a consultation service nationwide around the UK. If you are interested and you are looking to have your garden designed the right way and without having to move trees and shrubs five years down the line because you think, oh, well, I wish I'd have just put that over there now that I've been here a few years and now it's grown, then obviously I offer a full design service through Hazelwood Landscapes. So uh, yes, do get in touch, inquiries at hazelwoodlandscapes.com guys. If you are looking for any kind of design work and of course the implementation, I of course travel nationwide, um, putting in wildlife gardens, wildlife ponds, as you've already seen on the channel, I don't need to explain it, but just in case you are new to the channel and you weren't aware, um, but getting some structure in your garden, getting the trees and shrubs in your garden is the best thing you can do if you've just moved into a new plot because they can be establishing while you're thinking about the rest of the garden. So you're not losing a growing season while you are putting in patios, pathways, whatever you're doing, at least they're in and they're establishing. So uh, yes, lots of other videos on the channel as well, guys, about coppice management, how to manage these trees and shrubs. I could go on for another hour talking to you about all these kind of things which I'm sure some of you would appreciate. I'm sure others have got exactly what they need from this and are hopefully going to go on the wildyourgarden.com online shop and order some today because we have a whole host of plants that are available from trees to shrubs, you name it. We even have some uh, evergreen as well, the natives like yew and holly, so do go and check that out. Holly, one of my favourite hedgerow plants. There's some hedgerows of it along here which look absolutely brilliant. It's such a great plant for a hedge, I find, and good for privacy as well. And certainly better than the older waxy big leaf laurels, if you ask me. Uh, it provides so much more for wildlife. So there you have it. There's a brief history of the hedgerow, why it's important, why we should be planting more of them and not ripping them up to make two fields into one, if you ask me. Um, and absolutely what benefits it has for wildlife. Just some, I've only just touched on some of the benefits a hedgerow has in terms of its uh, ability to, su to support many, many forms of wildlife. They are one of the best features alongside a wildlife pond, I'm going to say. Obviously I'm slightly biased because <laughs> I've made, oh God, over a hundred of these now, that's for sure. Anyway, so, do check out the online shop guys, go and have a route through the rest of the channel. There's loads of other videos on trees and shrubs. I might actually start up a little bit of a playlist to give you guys an idea as to where you should be going at this time of year for planting these kinds of plants. And thank you as always so much for the support. If you haven't already, and if you haven't heard the message previously, then do subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in your own garden in videos to come. Thanks for watching, stay wild, I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.